You're welcome. Let's go through the details now. Another day, another demonstration. Today, aggrieved men's gold customers have poured out onto the streets in the Ashanti regional capital, Kumasi, one more time, demanding payment of their locked up funds with a troubled investment company. An order by the SEC for men's gold to halt all deposit taking activity worsened the crisis as the company struggled to pay up matured investments to its customers. Some are owed millions of Ghana cities, and the situation has caused, has had devastating effect on them. Some are suffering health problems, they say, due to the locked up funds. One demonstration after the other, and it gets more intense with the time. Today, they blocked major roads in Edum Enamakum in the central business district of Kumasi, burning tires. Kumasi appears to have been on fire. It is a, yes, it is against the public order act. What is more against the public order act than, than when 1.8 million Ghanaians are dying and we claim that because of public order act, we should sit down and just watch. Just last week, somebody died at Kansuwa. You, you, you don't worry. I'm coming. Why must we sit down there? The laws were made for with people. It's not, Ghan, it's not Ghanaians. The laws are made to govern Ghanaians and to protect us. And when we did peaceful demonstration, when we petitioned even CI, uh, the, the Iwoko, IGP, and all the major key stakeholders in this country, including the president, we didn't get any resource. So they shouldn't sit down there that, and tell us that if the government and the, the key institution, they don't act on this issue, you just fold our arms and watch, thinking that we have to come and seek, our, our man will go down the drain and will come to seek permit from police. It will not happen again. Um, actually, we are doing this because to remind because there has been a lot of petition all around from Accra Parliament um, uh, Information Ministry even Otum for himself this is the second um, we've given Otum for second petition so this bit, uh, protest was to be a reminder not a pro um, not a demonstration it's a peaceful reminder that we have we just want to tell Otum for to step in because we've petitioned him and then we're expecting him, oh, okay, to, to actually step in and then talk to the Nana Apia Mensa and then pay us. Because our monies, our investment are with them. And then from August, not even one extra value to any person. My reason for this protest is when Mama was in power, men's gold was working. And when Nanadu came, he just stopped it. And we have voted to create employment for him, his family, uh, 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 data bank, the, the finance minister, he's his brother. And so we have created employment for them. They are chopping. And he has stopped us uh, from, from uh, uh, eating. So that is all. And we are going to make sure people who are, have invested in men's gold are more than one million. And Nanadu beat uh, Mahama uh, uh, about one million. So we are all going to vote for go vote against him. So that is all. We need our money. She should allow she, she, she should allow him to come and work so that we get our money. Uh, there are sanctions. Uh, there are implications to that. So we have to identify the leaders, call them, and then the necessary processes will be taken. So for now, we will say we will leave it here. For now, uh, we will be able to identify the leader. We will call them since they are threatening to embark on the demonstration. This time, I would want them to uh, use the appropriate uh, uh, channel or go through the uh, necessary processes. So we'll definitely be inviting the leaders. Because we came, we tried identifying the leaders as they claim, but we did not identify even a single person. Have you arrested anybody? Uh, my understanding is three persons have been arrested, but I'm yet to uh, confirm that. So that's how it all went down in Kumasi. We have this question on our Facebook page. That's uh, our Joy News on TV and on Twitter as well. That's our Joy News on TV. Has government handled the men's gold crisis the best way possible, in your opinion? In all of this, those who owned men's gold and took those deposits continue to enjoy the proceeds. Well, they have their lives to live. There's no government intervention. That hasn't been. And the customers appear to have been left to their fate. So we've asked you that question on Facebook. Do answer for, for us and we'll share your thoughts with the rest of the world.
I sleep. I can't sleep. It, I mean, my case is becoming a police case. A police case because orphanage money is involved. They should give us our money. How, how much are we talking about here? Here, we are talking about 400,000. Instance, I'm in my final year of AIT. Because of this, I've not gone to school the whole of my trimester. Where is the money to pay for the school fees? People put their money there for chemotherapy, people stroke patients. I know of one woman who comes there almost every day. Almost every day. Her, her money is with men's gold. She just wants some part of her money to buy drugs. They are not giving it to her. She's in sick. Whenever I see her, I feel pity for her, even though I also cannot help. Now, what is not above the law? If he's doing something that is not good, that's why arrest him and bring him. Now, what is not above the law? And we need our money. The men's gold is treating us as, as criminals. We are so called Chinese customers. We have now become what? Criminals. Customers. Criminal customers. How on earth? How on earth now, if you are entering men's gold, men's gold office, you need to get security clearance. Really, I'm, I'm really just disappointed in Nanapia because ever since this whole thing started, we exercise so much patience and we think everything will go on well. You brought a payment schedule and said this, this, that, that, that you're going to pay. It never happened. You came back saying that you are going to pay 15% to us and it never still came. You go there, you tell our stories. You go there, the police prevent us. And I think they even spray pepper spray in our eyes, which is very bad. Come on, our own monies. And you still tend to let the police. Come on, it's very bad. I'm really. We are just, we are just suffering. There's nothing going on. We are supposed to pay school fees. We are supposed to cater for ourselves. We are supposed to feed ourselves. And you have nothing on you. This really is even beyond affect. It's deadly. And my life is ruined. One. I don't even have money to eat now. Now I have to depend on friends. From one friend to the other. Monday I go to Kofi, Tuesday I go to Ama because I've put in all my investments at men's gold. And all we are pleading with the government is to intervene because we know perfectly well that if he steps in, things will be better. We are pleading with Nana Ekufu Ado to come in and intervene for Nam one men's gold to pay us back our money. All right, so we'll be hearing shortly from a psychologist. But before we do that, let me remind you that we have an ongoing poll on our Facebook platform, uh, facebook.com forward slash join news on TV. You want to join us there, let us know what you think. Already some people have uh, voted uh, let's find out from you what you think as far as how government, uh, as far as government's handling of this issue is concerned. Uh, join us there with your comments and your thoughts. At the end of the show, or at the end of this particular conversation, we'll go there and we'll see what the poll is, whether you think government has handled it properly or not. But whilst we wait for you to continue with the voting and with the polling system, now this morning, the second deputy governor at the Bank of Ghana, Elsie Awaji, has been responding to the demands, as you may have, well, uh, 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 as you may have heard uh, from the customers. They want their money. They want the central bank to step in. They want government to intervene. Elsie has a response for them. Bank of Ghana has been very clear uh, for a long while about the fact that this was an unlicensed operation. We were not responsible for it. We tried. We warned the public uh, at different points in time. We told everybody if they continue to keep their money there, they did that at their own risk. And that's all I can say about it. But it's still within the powers of the bank to move in and close an institution that is holding itself as a financial institution and is not regulated, is it not? Well, we, we had started the process of uh, consultation, close consultation with other stakeholders, which we had wanted to work with. Uh, you don't just get up and close an institution. You need to understand what's there. What are they holding? Whose deposits? What, in what amounts? How are they invested? If you close them, where can you find it so people mm -hmm. can get? And so that process, it takes a while. It takes a while. And with, with men's school, we had no, no visibility at all in terms of what was going on there. So it was a process to unravel the mystery behind it and, and then at some point to act. But we were working in close consultation with other agencies. And of, of course it was um, closed down by the action of one of our sister regulators. And um, so that's what it is. But we had warned the public that they were at risk. So now the public is on their own? As far as we're concerned, we had issued enough warning. And I think that we had done our work. 
Well, if you're a men's good customer, I don't know what that, uh, how that sounds to you, what it even means to you. But what I do know is that we can get a psychologist to help uh, give you some kind of advice as to what to do in this very trying times for you. Well, Dr. Brina Riafe Akenting is a legal and social psychologist. He's been speaking to us about the psychological effect that this situation is having and could even have on customers. Mind you, before we let you listen to that, we're still running the poll on Facebook and we have it right there. So far, 4.1 thousand people have voted already. You want to join in that conversation. Has government handled the men's good crisis the best way possible? So far, the yes is at 42%. You think that government has not done its best. Uh, those who say no, government has not done its best, they are at 58%. But the, the, poll, the, the polls are still open. Voting is still ongoing. Let's know what you think. As we wait, let's listen to the psychologist. Definitely, it will affect almost everybody who has an investment there. The reason is that you and I, and for that matter, all of us, we work and invest with the intention of recouping profits, use it for our daily lives, and also keep it in times of need, go for it. So when it gets to a point where money you have purposely kept in custody of someone or an institution, you need it and you cannot have it, it will create problems for you. Several problems especially one if the money does not belong to you. Whenever people are frustrated, whether appropriately or wrongly, through their own fault or through someone, they will do anything possible to get what they want. So in this instance, I can say that there's an element of frustration. In what sense? It's their own goal, goal of getting money monthly or saving money for something has been blocked. So you start by probably negotiating uh, throwing out threat here and there, and at that time, few people will come up because the rest will also think that, oh, it will work out. But if, as time moves on, and they realize that the possibility or the probability of getting it is getting slimmer and slimmer, the more people are likely to join. So we need intervention, and that intervention from men's good itself and probably from the states. I, I think it's the way forward because if you leave it alone to men's good and the individual, uh, it, it is not going to be healthy. And you cannot even do that, because if the people go to the street, who intervenes? It's the police, and the police is uh, a state agency. So, and for how long can they do that? Especially if we look at the figures involved in terms of numbers and the amount. So it is important that the state intervenes and assured the members that as long as depending on available assets and the funds, at least each, if nobody gets everything and they get a bit of it, it will assuage them somehow. And usually when these things happen to people, they need support. They need psychological support. They need emotional support because it's going to be a burden. Some people are going to have sleepless nights. People are going to be stressed out. And if they don't get help, some, depending on their nature and their personality, some people might even go to depression. So individually and collectively, I think they should seek psychological counseling. So they should seek psychological help, if, especially if you, are, uh, you have been affected by this. So what next for customers? Chairman of the Aggrieved Customers of Men's Go, Timothy Binab, joins me on the line with more. Hello, Timothy. How are you doing? Happy New Year to you. No, I am doing well, madam, and uh, our sister. Mm. Happy New Year to you. I trust it's going well so far. Uh, happy New Year. But just that uh, it's not been easy with us. As I'm talking to you, I'm in Kumasi, because today we have a protest mm. at Kumasi, and I'm, right, I'm still there right now. Okay. So, f first of all, uh, you, w we've heard from the police that you... They had an order for you not to go on this demonstration, but you defied those order orders. Oh, um, <coughs> the issue is not uh, that uh, we decided to do anything on our own. Uh, we have uh, done an official demonstration in Accra, and uh, we have been able to petition the various... Uh, uh, stakeholders concerned in this matter, of which the uh, government is part, the agencies that Borg and SEC are part, 
and then uh, each council we petition the uh, parliament. After our petition, we did a follow-up, and uh, for about two months now, uh, after we've done the petition, we've not gotten any results. Uh, this collection of agreed customers of men's gold is nationwide, and uh, it, it, uh, it includes uh, customers uh, in Kumasi and Takwa. And uh, uh, considering the agitations of customers and frustrations that we are undergoing, uh, we cannot uh, uh, stay silent. We cannot uh, actually... And that we are, we are well disturbed, and there is no any solution to this matter from our government as, as a whole. And for that matter, we, we, we today, Kumasi, Accra, and Tepa have organized a protest in order to protest against uh, the, uh, uh, the unconcerned of the government. Mr. Binab, let me let me quickly come in here. Now, the point is that even though you are aggrieved, you are going through a lot of things and people sympathize with you, but you cannot take the law in your own hands. You cannot be lawless just because you are aggrieved. Yes, uh, we have not taken the law in our own hands because this process we have done in Kumasi, we have no intention of... Uh, 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 causing violence, and at the end of the protest, we have not caused any violence in Kumasi. Okay. Uh, the protest was peaceful. We were very cordial with the police, and so they instructed us uh, that uh, we need to put, uh, we need to stop the the, the 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 protest. And we accepted, and we cooperated with them, and then finally we ended the protest. Even in the, uh, before the end of the protest, we decided we would write a reminder letter, cover letter, and then send it to Osunfo because we have petitioned Osunfo as well, and we've never had any positive results. Mm -hmm. So in that course, when we were on our with police protection, uh, there was an, an unannounced uh, a call or an impromptu call that uh, they shouldn't allow us to go to Ozu for that aspect. There, there came a misunderstanding between some of our members who were not understanding why they will not, the police will not allow us to go to Ozu for. So in that aspect, we returned back, and then we, being leaders, have spoke, have spoke to our lead, our members uh, to halt or to stop the 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 the, the, the protest immediately. In that in that cause, there was this uh, uh, little uh, uh, misunderstanding. It was not a misunderstanding as well, but it was just uh, an explanation that could have resulted with uh, uh, a, a good interpretation. Okay. So, so two let or three of our customers were arrested. Were arrested. Okay. So that is the arrest that the police officer was referring to. So let me understand this clearly. And, 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 and hold on, hold on, sir, hold on, sir. Let me understand this clearly and lay it right uh, uh, straightforward for my viewers, okay? So you went on the demonstration this morning against the police orders not to do so. The police came, tried to disperse you. You finally dispersed, but then you said you had a written... Uh, uh, a written petition that you wanted to deliver to the two fourth, and so you headed to Menshia Palace. The police then stopped you on the way. There was some kind of altercation between your members and the police officers. Three of your members were arrested. Is that where we are now? Yes, please. Okay. Even in the course of us going to the Menshia, mm -hmm. it was, it was, we all came into agreement to go through a specific route by the police decision. And we followed that until so that call dropped up that uh, we shouldn't come to Manchia okay. and they should stop everything. And okay. uh, at that point, some of our colleagues were thinking that uh, were in their own uh, view that no, it is not right for the police to um, uh, stop us immediately in that. So aspect. what did they so do? There this, they were trying to get, to get more uh, information or clarity on that, and three of our members were arrested. And mm -hmm. then. Uh, uh, some of the leaders also did a follow-up to check on them. And then five of them were also uh, being asked to write their statement. And okay. uh, 
as I'm um, talking to you now, we are still at the police, uh, but uh, uh, they, they, they have shown uh, 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 gross leadership. Actually, they were, they, they were very nice with us. The police is very nice with us. It's not something that they have uh, uh, molested anybody. They haven't done any, anything that uh, uh, has uh, violated the, the, the human rights of any of our members. And that they actually needed us to... Right, Answer a few questions. So three, three of your members have been arrested and five of the leadership, five people uh, from those who led this uh, procession uh, have been asked to write your statement. Is that, oh, yes. Are you done with, with the statement? Oh, yes. We what are, what we is the police saying about them, your... We have, we are, it's most done with them, but we haven't still left the police station. Okay. What is the police station uh, police saying about the three uh, uh, members who have been arrested? Actually, um, we, we are still talking with them, and then they haven't come out with a, uh, 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 a final uh, a final explanation on that. So we are still there. What are they? It. What are they being charged with? Do you know? Have you asked the police? Come again, please. What are they being charged with? Those who have been arrested. What are on what basis were they arrested? And what are what have they been charged with? Are, they, are you talking about a charge? Yes. Have they been charged? Have they given them any charge? Ah, uh, they have not come out with a charge yet. Uh, I, I, have, I think I've uh, informed you that uh, they've had to write their statement first, and uh, how, how the members are or need to be addressed uh, the, uh, the statement. And then from there, we'll get to um, uh, conclude peacefully. Because uh, the, the, the process is not a demonstration, it's a process. And that process, uh, we've never violated that. Uh, we've never uh, um, caused any harm to any person or any other property. It was just peaceful, intended, uh, ending it peaceful. Mm. Very well. Since you're still at the police station, your members have not yet been charged, even though they've been arrested. Five of you are writing your statement. And we don't know what's going to happen next, but we'll get back to you for that. But at this point, where we stand finally, Mr. Binab, what is really your next step what do you want to do because obviously the government uh, is not really saying anything about your case what are you going to do next uh, our our we have petition government just as you said and uh, we've not had any information or anything resourceful from the government's response and since we are citizens and we are uh, customers as well in this country, we expect that government come into this uh, issue and then uh, address it amicably for all of us to uh, 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 have our, uh, our peace as well. Because we're uh, looking at uh, the situation, the situation has uh, resulted uh, to a, a lot of death. As I'm talking to you now, we recorded um, almost seven deaths. And then we have it on records. And moreover, uh, some of our people on the uh, other demonstration day, there was a, a lady who was pregnant and she had to give birth for uh, 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 hard labor. She okay. had to uh, premature and the child died. Okay. Ma 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 the, question, the question is what exactly you want to do from here? Yes. What, where do you so go from here? Now, after here, the leaders are going to meet again. Okay. And then the next, the next step will be will be taken and then it will be communicated just as we, 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 we used to do. We Very expect well. government to come in and then uh, call Nana Apia Ado into order because uh, our money have been locked up there okay. and he has been left freely to enjoy his freedom. And then he has also been protected with police uh, 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 on his properties and then uh, um, and his family. And as we are here, we have been locked out from the, uh, the, the, the as, as Ghanaians. Mr. And Binab, thank you. more me, painful that the government has actually ignored our concerns. They, 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 I think, and then most of the government prominent leaders are saying we are greedy. Very well. Mr. Binab, 
Ms. Abinab, we'll have to get back to you after you're done with the police uh, so that you give us the update on what exactly happened uh, with three of your members who have been arrested, five of you who have been asked to uh, put down your statement. But thank you very much for your time. Timothy uh, Binab, there, he speaks for the aggrieved men's good customers. There, He tells us he's at the police station. We'll be having a conversation. You saw what happened today in Kumasi. They went on the street putting up flames. We want to find out exactly. We've spoken to a psychologist about the state of mind of these people and what sort of psychological or emotional support they need. We'll be talking to a security expert, Adam Bona, who has already joined me in the studio about what, I mean, is there any potential security threat in this issue going forward? But before I engage Mr. Bona, let's get an update from lawyer for the men's good customers. Amanda Clinton is her name. He, she joins me on the line now. Uh, Ms. Amanda, thank you very much for your time this afternoon here on The Pulse. Let me quickly take your thoughts on what happened in Kumasi today. Um, well, I'm just saddened because um, I didn't know that people had been arrested. Um, so I just say thank you for having me on the show. It's great to be on again. Um, for instance, just now I've received an email from someone from London, and she says she's just been scammed out of £68,000. And yesterday the police made arrests, um, you know, in relation to this, and this is a men's gold customer in London. And she asked the seven police station, um, you know, to chase after these cheaters. And she's just confirmed to me that they made arrests in London in relation to a men's gold scam. So if we've got someone who's reported something to a police station and almost within three days has, there's been arrests in London in relation to associates of men's gold, we do have to ask ourselves the question, why no action is being taken in Ghana, and we're having a situation where, you know, um, those who have had their money locked up are also, you know, being questioned and arrested. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know what you mean, but let me find out from you. Uh, let me just get this clear from what you just said. You said that uh, there's been a £50,000 case related to men's gold in the yes, UK. Yes, she's Polish and she's based in the UK. Okay. And she just sent me an inquiry um, online because she, she told me that the police said she needs to get a lawyer, but okay. they've done the arrest. So who you have they? Me? Who has been arrested? Yes. So basically, I, I, I've, I've called her and I've messaged her. She hasn't picked up, but I'll find out more information. But she literally says, "I am a victim of scammers from Ghana. I asked the seven police for help in freeze in freeing um, these cheaters who had cheated and spent um, sixty-eight thousand pounds." Um, on them. Then she said, yesterday the police made arrests and I should find a lawyer who will represent me and help me regain my money. So, so you don't know So you don't know who has been arrested as of now? No, I don't know, but as soon as I get confirmation, I'll let you know. Very but well. quite crucially, um, you know, the Security and Exchange Commission have written to me mm. um, in respo response to my petition and okay. they very clearly say that they're working with all the departments um, cited, you know, when I petitioned them, um, addressed in a letter within the parameters of their jurisdiction. They also say that um, under the Securities Industry Act, the prosecution of an offence against the provisions of this act shall be by the Attorney General. So, although EOCO, as of 14th of August 2018, the letter says, I just want that bit for you as well. Although EOCO filed an official complaint on the criminal aspect of this men's gold case, together with relevant documents and attachments, mm. on the 14th of August 2018, nothing as such has been done since then, basically. You know, mm. so a lot of questions are going to be raised as to, do you know what I mean? How can people commit this against so many people with so much money involved, 200 million um, dollars, 1.8 million people, okay. and um, nobody's commenting, nobody's arresting, and then somebody in London complains about 168,000 pounds, and already arrests have been made, and they told her, find a lawyer. It doesn't okay. make any sense. So, so we need to, first of all, we need to uh, confirm, you've already said that you have not yet confirmed who has been arrested, or what this arrest is uh is really yes, about so we need to explain to the police that very, she's well. Been very well so we still need to get that confirmation before we can make any categorical statement based on that but you said that the sec uh said this 
case will have to be referred to the Attorney General, correct? No, the, yes, the SEC said quite literally um, that prior to that, the Commission has held meetings with um, EOCO on potential okay. criminal aspects of this matter and has filed a formal criminal complaint together with relevant documents mm. and attachments on the 14th of August 2018. Okay. But, um, pursuant to Section 207 of the Securities Industries Act. And then they say, for the avoidance of doubt, the prosecution of an offense against the provision of this act shall be by the Attorney General. Okay. So the Attorney General is waiting for the President to give her instructions. Then she will give instructions to CID, and then CID you know, will give instructions to Interpol. So but you, you, none of these organs can really operate unless they get the go-ahead in order to do so. They get the go-ahead. but and, and, and you have raised concerns about how it has taken so long that the EOCO has been looking into this since 2014. Now, it's important at this point, and I believe you will agree as a, uh, the counsel for these people uh, who are aggrieved, that you find, you find the person who took this money. What do you know about his whereabouts, Nanapia, the CEO? Right now, we, 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 right now, we can't be absolutely certain. He was certainly in, um, he was certainly in South Africa. Um, he spent some time over December in Nigeria, allegedly, because it's probably quite easy to you know, take cars across and, and come back. So we're not too sure about that. But what we are concerned about is that if you've got 200 million US dollars pumped into this country within five years, and you've got 1.8 million um, citizens of Ghana affected. That is what I'm more concerned about. I'm more concerned about earmarking his assets, tracing his assets, arresting people, and clawing back as much as we can, because this is standard procedure globally. And in the GFA case, assets were, were earmarked, people were prevented from traveling, and um, properties were also earmarked. So, but that, we that know that is happening in Kumasi. Recently, there was a story from Kumasi that some of the properties, some of his properties yes. are being sold in Kumasi. What triggered that? I mean, what led to that action? And why isn't it happening in Accra? It is happening in Accra because what's happening is w when you sue for breach of contract, it's different from fraud. So you're just saying, look, we all had an agreement. They said they'll pay us every month. They signed to it. They haven't done it. So we want our money, which is fine. What's happening in Accra is several things. Men's gold do not actually own some of their properties. Um, and so they're waiting for the lease to just run out, basically. Mm. The other issue in Accra is that men's gold have taken SEC to court as of, um, of 2nd of October. And they basically wanted the, the court to determine FTC's jurisdiction um, on this case. So basically they're saying because FTC was so public, it spoils their business. So they've taken them to court. Mm. So what men's gold lawyers are doing is they're trying, every time people try and go to court, they're trying to say, well, this matter is being determined by the court in terms of FTC. So let's hold off on these other cases. But when people sue for breach of contract, that's different because it's kind of like you're not suing about fraud. So is that the suing. next move? Is that your next move to sue for yeah, breach of contract? We've already started filing. We've already started filing quite a few. Um, and we're just suing for breach of contract because every time you mention fraud, um, the issue points to the fact that, um, you know, the court is still determining this matter with SEC and... Um, and, and, and so the issue of fraud has to be, de be, de be determined by that court. Okay. But quite crucially, I mean, SEC has said that they are working together with, you know, all other departments um, addressed in the letter, um, but they can only work within their jurisdiction. Okay. So it is for the Attorney General to exercise her power. It is for the President's Office, who is CC'd in this letter, to exercise its power because it's not about spending taxpayers' money, it's that a potential crime has been committed. No so, so, for, so for you as counsel for the aggrieved uh, men's gold customers, you're looking for this case, I mean, the case uh, in which men's gold has sued SEC to proceed, so that what? 
Sorry, you're cutting off. Yeah, I'm asking. You're, you're, you, for, for you as counsel for the aggrieved customers, you're looking for the case uh, in which Men's Gold has sued SEC to proceed. And once that proceeds, you're looking to be able to carry, uh, carry on with a suit for fraud. Is that correct? Is, is that correct about what? Okay. I need to understand this process. You are no, looking... So basically, why we are concerned that the criminal aspect has not been kicked off in terms of started is that Interpol exists in Ghana within CID. Interpol should notify all other countries about this so that they can start looking. It's like an automatic search. Bank accounts, you know, names pop up. Families, relatives, um, close associates. You know, these names, as soon as you feed the computer, these names start popping up. And then you can also see there's movement of cash. You can see where property is in You can see a lot of things from Interpol, Ghana, notifying international counterparts. They are tied. They can't even do that because CID has not minuted to Interpol to do that. And Attorney General has to instruct CID and um, President's Office has to instruct, uh, um, instruct Attorney General. And these things, from what we're hearing, haven't really been done for any sort of international notification to be done about clawing back Ghanaian's money. Isn't there, isn't there anything that, as counsel, you could do to push this through, to, to speed up yes, this I can, process? Yes, I but I mean, I'm not going to really reveal my tactics or my strategy, um, you know, uh, on air. But, okay. of course, we have been forced to, um, you know, seek help in terms of the international community and reaching out to to people and explaining that we can't go through normal channels because people aren't really that bothered, basically. Okay. F finally, finally, um, 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 Ms. Clinton, let me just find out from you where we are. And just help me if I'm mistaken in this, uh, in this uh, chain of thought that I'm going to put, put a quote. Based on what we, you said to me right now, my understanding is that the SEC is, 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 has said that the Attorney General must take action. Now, IOKO investigation began in 2014. It's going on. You are concerned that nothing has been done, even though that investigation has been going on since two, 2014. And here in Ghana, uh, here in Accra, it's difficult to get some of the properties sold, etc., because they were leases. They were not they were owned, renting, yeah. they were not owned yeah. by, by Men's Gold. That, but Men's Gold has also sued the SEC, and there is a bit of a delay there as well. That is making it difficult for you to go ahead with a suit for fraud. Yes, I mean, that's why we're just going to simply go for breach of contract okay. and not even talk about fraud until the court determines fraud. Okay. But this is a, I want your, your viewers to really understand this. 1.8 million Ghanaians in five years is a lot. And furthermore, 200 million Ghana CDs was pumped into an unregulated company for five years with nobody stopping them, as of February 2017, the chairman of the Finance Committee of Parliament said two weeks ago they had told men's goals in February 2017 they were illegal, yet they weren't shut down. So any time a company like this is not shut down immediately, no matter what sort of notifications you do, people can still deposit in one form or the other, be it through their sister company, Brew, or pay the commission at, um, at, at, um, at, at men's goal. So government, you know, it's not for government to pay these people, but it's for government to be active in terms of helping to trace, like, you know, and, and, and showing initiative like they did for the GFA case in terms of earmarking assets, um, earmarking buildings, finding out where these people are internationally, um, notifying Interpol internationally and let us assess what happened in the financial accounts of this company for the last five years. Because okay. nobody's told us why they can't pay people. All we know is that the second the deposits were stopped, you know, they stopped taking deposits in terms of the block, okay. men's gold all of a sudden were unable to pay people, you know, which raises other questions because when you have, for instance, a Ponzi scheme, a Ponzi scheme can only work when deposits are coming in. The moment it stops, it means you can't pay people. 
So, so all of these questions have to be asked. Answered. But we need a forensic analysis mm. of what went ha what so, happened so in this company for the last five years. For the last five. So for your part, you're looking to sue for breach of contract. And you're looking yes, to make breach progress of from this contract there. and to, to, to seize as much things as we can abroad, okay. to see if they're liquidating, to see if they're moving, um, they're, they're, they're selling gold in terms of just moving money through commodities like gold and diamond. You know, it, it's not rocket science. So have, have, you like have you sued already? Procedure. Have you sued already or are you still in the process? Of course. I mean, we, we, are, we, we filed. I mean, it's just been the Christmas break. Okay. So we should hear back shortly. But okay. we, we've definitely done quite a few um, filings against Very mental. Well. Very well. Uh, Amanda, we'll be here to uh, share with our viewers the updates as we go along. Uh, thank you very much for your time this afternoon. Amanda Clinton is counsel for the aggrieved men's school customers. Uh, it's getting keeps getting dramatic by the day. But let's look at the security implications. And that's why I have here in the studio Adam Bona. Adam Bona is a security expert. He's going to help us toss a few issues of our mind. Mr. Bona, thank you very much for your time and for your patience uh, yeah. whilst we were having all the legal conversations on the, on the side as well as the, uh, the psychological conversation on the side as well. Yeah. I hope the year has been good so far. Uh, yeah, well, not too good when you, you know, uh, realize how many... I think on the first till the first till date we've had, you know, Tripony, we yeah. had, you know, a lot of issues a every day issues. becoming a daily activity. So in terms of the security safety space, you want to say no. It mm. hasn't been it hasn't what been I was so expecting. Good. Okay. Yeah. Well let's go on and focus a bit more on what's happening with the men's gold. I mean we've seen them today. Usually and typically when people go on the street and burn tires. It, it, it has a, a, a societal understanding of it, and I want to find out if it resonates with the security, whether there's a special security understanding to it, like what they did this afternoon, this morning. What does it mean when people go out on the street, put up ties, and start burning them? Well, uh, good afternoon, and good afternoon to your cherished viewers. And Happy New Year! It's my mm -hmm. first, uh, you know, since two thousand, since we entered two thousand and nineteen. Two thousand nineteen, right? You, you, you see this uh, when people feel that there is no avenue uh, to seek redress, or when they think somebody out there is not listening enough. Mm -hmm. Then people would go all out and try to take the laws into their own hands and try to literally break the laws of the land in terms of in Ghana here, the Public Order Act. If you saw what happened in Kumasi this morning, yeah. for me, I think it was despicable. It shouldn't have happened, but uh, we want to say this could have been prevented. I spoke about this thing somewhere about six months ago mm. when I thought uh, we'll get to a point where these people are going to be uncontrollable and it's going to be then we begin to do you know catch them you know uh, they they are always ahead of mm. the security and mm. uh, that's what we saw in Kumasi okay. as we sp as we sit I'm aware there are a number of planned demonstrations in some regional capitals by the men's gold customers. by the men's gold customers I mean I spoke to a few of them. Mm. Be before uh, you go on, Mr. Bona, you said that this could have been prevented. What happened in Kumasi could have been prevented. Of course, there haven't been any ca known casualties as we speak. But when you say it could have been prevented, how could it have been prevented? The police said, don't do this. They went away, uh, ahead and I, I think it. this could have been prevented. You realize that, is it about six months ago when the sec, the exchange, security exchange commission okay. came out to say, stop uh, taking deposit. I think it's about six months ago or so. Uh, that was when I realized, okay, this thing is becoming serious. And I thought that at that point, the Bank of Ghana and the powers that be could have collaborated enough to, does men's go, do they have a bank account? If they have a ma bank account, how much money is in there? Then you are doing a forensic analysis of men's gold and their customers. How much money do they have in there? The assets, I'm aware about 80% of the buildings you see, you know, uh, with, well, with the cladded, 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 yeah. you know, gold uh, colors mm. are not for them. Mm. And so most people, excuse me, is to say, would have been fooled to be believe that the buildings belong to them and they would, you know, sell houses and send, give them their money. Were they depositing their monies in the banks? We don't know. If you remember the... Someone from, I think the head of this, someone from the Mirrors Commission mm. said on your network, your sister 
station, Joy FM, that Men's Gold transferred about $60 million in, I think, 2017, hmm. somewhere out of the country. Did it go through the proper channel to be transferred? Which bank did it go through? And as the money went in there, did, did they receive some products in return? If I'm, I'm either paying for a service rendered to me outside the country. What is or, that service or what are the goods? Or, or, or I'm prim, trying to import products. All these things were not explained. And so it kept on. So as we speak, we don't know, you listen to their council, 1.8 million. Ghana is just about 30 million. We are mm. not even up to 30. Mm. So if out of the number, we have our 1.8 million adults. When I say adults, anyone who, uh, people ranging from 18 and above, mm -hmm. depositing money there. This constitutes a serious security threat. And mm -hmm. so this could have been prevented by way of the security, probably the security agencies, the Bank of Ghana, collaborating enough to say, you know what, looking at this, if we allow this guy to escape, we would not have, we would not be able to answer to uh, our people, the citizens. Mm. I've had the more populist statements like, oh, you know, these people dug their own grave. No, there's nothing like they dug their own grave. I mean, I had somebody say, you know, the president, uh, you know, someone trying to impugn political connotations here. Well, they've been, they've been doing you know, that for And, and for me, time. we shouldn't be looking at that aspect. We should be looking at uh, not making it a more populist, you know, taking a populist stand by saying that you were advised. It's not just enough for the Bank of Ghana when people to say, say, stop putting your mm, money in there. When people say these things, like you were advised, I mean, that's what government's position seems to have been. We've heard the finance minister say, this is out of pure greed on the part of the people who invested there. When you hear such comments, uh, already these are people who feel aggrieved. People who feel, someone said, my entire life is ruined. When someone says my entire life is ruined, you get the sense they're saying, I have nothing to lose. Yeah. And so I would do whatever exactly. it takes exactly. because my life is already ruined. When you hear people, the men's gold customers say this, and you hear government say it was out of greed, looking at it from a security perspective, what is it that you see? I just think that those who would say it is out of greed, yes, they would have a point, but somehow they don't really understand what will constitute a security threat. They, 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 they will not really understand what will constitute a security threat. Simply because, you see, the moment you begin to say it was out of greed, I mean, can you touch greed? You cannot really touch greed. But these are people who've given their physical money to an individual or an organization that is supposed to be state regulated. Mm. If they are not regulated, then why do we elect leaders? We are not living in a banana republic where there are no laws. There are laws in this country. It's the reason why even if you attempt suicide, it is your own life. Mm. But if you are tempted to take your own life, the police will take you to the police hospital if you don't if you are fortunate not to die or unfortunate. Then they'll they will prosecute but, 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 you. And so mine is, so my, my is that we should stop at this point, we've gone past the stage where we say this people we begin to blame these people. Okay. When we finish dealing with the aspect of bringing the owners of men's goats to book, then we can talk about greed and probably uh, advising, I mean, as we speak, others are investing their money in other schemes. Yeah. And we are sitting here mm -hmm. uh, a year or two, and it's going to hit us in the face. And so for me, Gifty, we have to be, let's let government know that, you know what, uh, it is time to crack the whip. Let's look for where these people are. Let's not allow the customers, aggrieved customers of men's go to be hitting the street mm -hmm. illegally. For me, I think that the leaders, uh, shouldn't have gone onto the, the streets or, you know, demonstrated illegally because, you see, you cannot play it out. You can't win when you are breaking the law with government. Yeah. It's not possible mm -hmm. because if government will have to turn it around, you will lose. And so for me, I think that whatever they have to do, it needs to be legal, legitimately go on demonstration from the police instead of burning ties and, you know what, I could have been caught in, in the Bruhaha, even though I don't have my money with mm -hmm. men's gold and I'm not a member of men's gold family. Mm -hmm. And so for me, I think that they should follow the lay down procedures. I'm told three of them have been arrested. arrested I yeah. think the police should prosecute them before court just to serve as a deterrent for future to stop what you call it, people. You, you think that the three who have been arrested yeah, they should, should, they no, should they, be uh, taken to court? No, they should be taken to court. You know, whilst we are asking the state authorities to ensure that if men's gold, I mean, it's a pyramid scheme, if it's a Ponzi scheme, 
this is a scam, they should be prosecuted. We should also be asking that demonstrators who hit the streets illegally, when they are arrested, they should be punished. Because if you heard from their counsel, mm -hmm. you should have asked their counsel whether she's also counseling the, 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 what do you call it, the, 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 customers the customers who are demonstrating. Not, not to be hitting well, the street. he was just saying that it's, it's surprising to hear that three of them have been arrested. She didn't know. That two well, of them have been arrested. Uh, well, she should have said she's surprised. She, I would have wished to hear her say, I'm, su I'm surprised they, they hit the streets. Okay. Because well, then saying she's that. surprised, it means that she's complicit. I mean, I'm just alleging. It means she's aware, but she, for her, they shouldn't have been but, arrested. But, but, but once they, which but, is wrong. But quite two wrongs don't make a right. Once the people have informed the police that this is the action they wanted to take, uh, they've informed the police. No, they've no, 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 no. The law, the law no. The, I mean, I wish I, I had it before me. What it says is that you inform the police, you, I think it's about five days or so, you, the police would have to invite you. The police would have to look at their own resources they have. Would they be able to match up how many people are coming? If they do all that, what route are you going to use? If you are going to use a very busy route to disturb probably my sleep or my, my work, they will tell you, no, this is probably... Uh, presidential route you can't use here you can't use here okay. and usually if you disagree what the police would have to do would have to be to go to court and stop you from demonstrating okay. and if you do and they arrest you they will prosecute you but if you did not inform the police when I say inform the police you need to write to them informing them if you didn't do that then you are just breaking the law and okay. so two rights don't make uh, a two right two so wrongs for me, don't make a yes. right Okay. Two, two, two wrongs don't make a right. Okay, correct, okay. Yes. my very final question before I say, I'm going to take some comments on Facebook. And we've been asking you uh, to vote in this poll that's running on our Facebook page. Uh, whether, you, whether or not you think government has handled this men's good crisis the best way possible. Well, those are the results there. We'll be closing the polls very shortly. But let me take my very quick final uh, question with you, Mr. Bona, about what you see. Based on what, what happened today in Kumasi, and based on what these men's good customers have been talking about they've, they've issued a lot of threats they're saying look you cannot do this to us we will not uh, nobody will sleep in this country if we don't make our money etc and we've seen what happened in Kumasi today no casualties again I must say but in the future going forward is there a potential security threat and how should we deal with it no there's a serious uh, security threat if you saw what happened in Kumasi you realize that they bent a lot of ties very very close to the I think one of the men's gold buildings what it means literally is that you know what these buildings could have caught fire and you are going to have a chain of buildings burning together these people if you realize they recently they picketed around the men's gold building around Jowulu and some of them actually literally ran onto the expressway the the N1 what it means is that these people could have been run over by vehicles. Mm. And some of these people who were also coming at a certain speed could have tried swerving. And at a certain speed, if you swerve, yeah. you could somersault. And so it has a lot of security implications and bad people could infiltrate yeah. to destabilize this country. And so for me, let's not play with it. But I think that uh, the police would have to, I mean, we, we had the, the woman. Uh, there is a suit against SEC and yeah. uh, counter suit by the, the, the you know, men's gold lawyers and the yeah. men's gold uh, clients. And so for me, I think that this issue would have to be handled. What I am, I'll be calling for would be a policy statement from government. A policy statement a from government. A policy statement from government okay. on how men's gold issue is going to be dealt with. Okay. Let's not, you know, make it, uh, make, you know, popular statements like, you know, they dug their own grave and they made it too deep. At the end of the day, we elect leaders to lead us. We don't elect leaders and lead them. And so they would have to show their way and say, no, this is out of order. If there is an element of fraudulent, you know, uh, activities, get them arrested. In any case, we have the, uh, the fraud and visa unit of the Ghana Police Service. I mean, those days, if you went to an embassy with fraudulent document, they only, only refused you. But we had a law that says that if you went there now, when they catch you, they should prosecute you. Okay. And just for visa fraud, people have been uh, fined and convicted. And so okay. we need to d deal with this issue uh, well. the way it should be handled. Well. Mr. Bona, you stay with me a while longer because right after this, we will also be talking about what's happening in Tripoli, which you referred to. But quickly, let's go on Facebook, find out what the polls are, uh, the polls are saying. Uh, 4.2 thousand people have voted so far. So the question is, has government handled the men's good crisis the best way possible, in your opinion? 41% of you say yes. 
you think that government has handled it properly and you and by government handling what we know government has done so far is to say that look we warned you uh, government is not going to put this money here we've heard from the uh, bank of ghana saying that so 41 percent of you think that this is really not the best uh, uh way to handle this problem but 59 percent of you a majority of you say uh no uh you 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 think that government has not handled this uh the way that it should so let me take some comments on that po uh, ba based on that poll. So, uh janelle bryce says is government responsible for someone else's business okay uh daniel ofori again says uh, okay, is responding to you, Janelle. He says, no, but it was the government's uh, duty. Yes, but no, but it was the government's duty to prevent them from starting bus the business in the first place. What use is the government if it cannot protect its citizens from stuff? like this so this is like a very interesting conversation that's still ongoing uh, on, on social media there's a part that says um this is a part that said that government should have should step in there's a part that said look government doesn't owe anybody uh, that uh, responsibility because they were warned but bedo davis says when they were enjoying their abnormal profits no were they paying government any tax on their abnormal profit? In any case, what do you want the government to do about this issue? Well, Mr. Agbedo, what I can say that uh, Mr. Bona yes, expect, for example, to hear from government, he says, it's a policy statement. Just don't, he says, don't just sit down uh, in silence, but come out with a policy statement. Let us know what the, what the uh, government position is on this uh, and what it is going forward. Nyameba Kwesi Buedu. Uh, says, what do you want government to handle? How do you want government to handle it when after a series of warnings the people decided to go ahead to transact business with men's gold? I stand with Nam One. Do you remember? Yes, we do remember. That was uh, a position by some customers there. Um, Evans Donna, someone says the victims are not saying government should pay them. The victims are asking for victims are asking for enforcement of the law since someone has Filed the law, so floated the law. Uh, sovereignty lies in the state. Uh, that's Evans there. Kwabena in team at Jakari says Men's Gold is not a bank. It is a gold buying company. So if government comes in, then it means that all companies that have, okay, that has folded up. You won't say that have folded up with the money, uh, with with people's money. Uh, government must intervene. That is why uh, government of Ghana gave many warnings so the people should go to court okay uh, that's your position let's take a few more comments and wrap this up this is from aj jemfi yao he says considering the numerous questions by the bank of ghana about the activities of men's gold one would say the customers of men's gold are alone in this uh, fight for their monies to be paid back and the and and forgive and okay hold on and the Bank of Ghana can just look on helplessly. But to err is human and to forgive is divine. The Bank of Ghana should forgive them. And then you smile. The customers are already suffering the trauma of regretting their actions and how much they are losing to men's gold. Sika Yemoja. Okay. Um, ha Halid blows. He will be my final comment on this. He says, what should government do? If government makes any mistakes to use our taxes to clean up this mess, I will be very disappointed. Okay, so those are the court section of comments coming in on the men's gold matter. We are asking you whether or not you think government has acted uh, uh, the way, uh, you know, good enough. And majority of you do not think so. Well, let's wrap up on that conversation. We'll still be here to give you an update as and when it happens. What we have done, by the way, is bring you an update on what happened in Kumasi today. We understand that three persons have been arrested by the police. Five of the leadership of the men's good customers have been asked to put down their statement as well. They tried to petition or go to the Mencia Palace. They were blocked by the police. There was an altercation. Three of them were arrested. We've spoken to the lawyer for the men's good customers who says that they're trying to sue. She said actually that they filed the suit already. And it is a suit for uh, breach of contract because uh, w w they believe that there is uh, an ongoing case that's delaying the process. So they've sued for breach of contract. We'll follow up on that and ask them when there's any new development. We'll let you know. They actually want Interpol to act because then Interpol can trace, you know, the movement of uh, Nanapia, who, whose whereabouts she says they're not sure of. We'll bring you more.
as we go along. And indeed, we've given uh, the men's group customers some advice from psychologists as to what to do. Emotional support, psychological support, if you can afford it, by all means, go for it. And if you're a family or friend to any of these people who have been affected, be there for them in this trying moment as we find a solution.